Hey there everybody in the FFBE Global Facebook group and hello to everybody who sees this video on YouTube as well. Welcome to this week's Ask an Old Mog video where we take questions and try and demonstrate them to get answers in a visual format. Uh, usually trying to aim at kind of like beginner players in the game, people who just have like questions about the game. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. Um, so today's question or questions actually both come from two different places. One from a conversation I was having um, with somebody I had recently on the channel, Dark Flare, who had a question um, that he just thought would be a useful topic to talk about. Um, and, and then also a question that I did pull from the Facebook group. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Um, so the first question that, that we came up with is one that we're going to be able to demonstrate visually. Um, you know, what difference does it make to use a one-handed versus a two-handed weapon? Um, and I think that uh, Dark Flare knows the answer to this question, but just thought it would be useful to talk about. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop up some answers on the screen here. Um, what you need to know about one-handed versus two-handed weapons is that um, variance is an important part of the damage calculation formula. And this is kind of nerdy, um, but what you need to know is that as a modifier, your variance, the impact it has, is multiplicative rather than additive. And so I've got some formulas here. Um, the differences between multiplication and addition. You know, four times two is eight. Four plus two is six. Obviously, eight is bigger than six. Um, 16 times two is 32. 16 plus two is 18. So the bigger the, the 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 base number and the modifiers are, the more number you're gonna get by multiplying rather than adding. And that's why adding killers, which is a multiplier or jump damage or LB damage or anything like that, adds more than just giving yourself more attack. Because that's a, 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 attack is additive, just like attack percentage is additive rather than multiplicative. Um, so there you go. So it's a very, very important part of, of the formula um, and it's multiplicative because it's a modifier. So here's why that matters. Um, a one-handed sword's variance is 1.05 to 1.25. Um, the average modifier, of course, being 1.15. And the average, uh, the, a two-handed sword is 1.25 to 1.75. You can see just from the modifiers alone, um, a two-handed sword's lowest modifier roll is higher, or, the, or is the same as the maximum higher, the highest maximum highest roll on a one-handed sword. Average modifiers are 1.15 and 1.5 respectively. Um, so if you look at the differences here, you know, four times 1.15 is 4.6. Four times 1.5 is six. Um, 16, 1.15 is 18.4 versus 25 if you do um, a 1.5. And then if you use really big numbers, it gets bigger. 4,000 times 1.5 is 4,600. 4, and 4,000 times 1.5 is 6,000. So we get much bigger numbers based on the 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 uh, the, the variance and the, um, the average score. So what we're going to see here, I'm going I'm to go ahead and pop this up here. We've got two Steiners here in this party. Um, we're going to demonstrate this. Notice they both have 332 attack. Okay. They are both wearing a 180 attack weapon, right? There we go. This one happens to be two handed. So we can see its variance is 1.25 to 1.75. Um, it has some stuff on it, but it doesn't really matter. The important thing is it's just its variance and its attack are the same as this one is a one handed sword, 180. 1.05 to 1.25 this does matter it has falcon strike which makes the attack it makes it the caster attack twice um so we had to equip something that lets the caster do that on this one so just to have the same scenario um this yeti combat style does that it lets them attack twice um so uh we're gonna go in we're gonna test this in the training dummy i'm gonna go ahead and put this here so i can keep them separate uh, let me remove this esper really fast there we go. Uh, this one is going to, the back row guy is going to be um, the one-handed weapon, right? Back row is one-handed, front row is two-handed. We're gonna go into the training dummy and we're gonna test this. So we should see higher numbers off of the the um, the two-handed one. The numbers are, the, the numbers are gonna be kind of, they're very low attack units and you know, whatever. Um, but they're, we're gonna we're gonna see the difference. I I hope. And honestly, the bigger your stats get, the more you're gonna see this difference. Okay. All right. So we're gonna start with the um, the one-handed guy. Here's our one-handed guy, right? Um, if we go to the menu, back row guy, 
is one-handed as we see falcon blade he's going to attack twice and we're going to see what his damage is so here's here he goes okay that was two attacks this steiner's going to guard so i'm going to go ahead and write this number down when i see this because i just i i'm not going to not going to keep track so here we go we're going to guard this one and we did 20,798. 20,798. So what we're hoping is that two-handed Steiner should do a little more than 20,000 damage. Not not a ton more, but more. Twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and forty. So twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and forty. Do some quick maths here. Uh, twenty-seven thousand. 740 minus 20,798. 6,942 more damage. Now, we didn't factor anything else in, right? Um, we didn't factor in, you know, imperils or weapon imperils or stat buffs or anything like that that's, that's going to make our units significantly stronger. Actually, they are buffed for attack right now because they did uh, they did a buff on themselves. Let's try it again. You know, so here's here's one handed Steiner. He did 20,909. Two handed Steiner does. Thirty-one thousand seven hundred and ninety-eight. So buffs make a big difference. We get more and more damage. The more modifiers we get crammed into this formula, we get more damage. But as you can see, two-handed weapon does better than a one-handed weapon, um, and all that is is just the weapons variance. That's it. So very easily demonstrated. Um, that two-handed weapons are in, invariably better at doing damage. Your your potential is better because the modifier of the variance is bigger by default. There's my answer on that one. So let's get out of here and let's go talk about question number two. So question number two is, what's the best way to level up all my espers? And my answer to this one is, do the daily super sight and magicite dungeons and make sure that when you do, you steal ore from the 100 energy level difficult or the 100 energy boss that lets you max out your Esper skill tree very quickly because you get more extra ore every day. Um, also be sure that you run the super sight expeditions until you have all your Espers at level 60. Um, once you have them all at level 60, then you want to switch to farming relics because that's going to help you make more ore that you can use to max out the tree. So I just threw a lot of stuff at you. I'm going to go ahead and show you in the game what I'm talking about. If you go in the vortex, um, also, right now, when this uh, this video is live, you can do Creeping Malice every day to get extra Esper Ore as well, and that's going to help you level up faster. Um, if you get into right here, that's Enhanced Pain, Chamber of Crystals, Chamber of Super Sight. Um, there's four diff or five different colors, four different colors, um, and you can do these once a day. Okay, I've, I really only do the, the expensive one because I'm mainly getting ore for myself, but you can go into all of these every day. And you can get, um, you can get Esper Super Sights um, to help level up your Espers. And they're all different colors. The different colors level up different guys. Um, and from the hardest difficulty, you want to steal ore um, to make sure that you get ore. So let's talk about this. I'm going I'm to go into the Esper screen and show you real quick. Um, let's grab Odin, whatever. It, on the Enhance pane, so this is where you get all your super sites and, and magicites and all that are here's the super sites they're really I, I have a ton of them because all my aspers are maxed out um and here's ores so the super sites just give xp the ores increase the sp or the skill points you can see mine has zero right now um that you use to buy skills so you want to at this point once you max out your level you want to just keep on buying skills because you might have skills that you've not learned yet um, and I obviously have a lot that I have not earned yet on my Odin. Um, but you want to make sure you're getting this. The ore is a very rare resource. So you want to try and steal it every day from the, the dungeon and craft as much as you can using relics. So if you go into uh, crafting, for example, here we go, go into items and other and scroll down. 
keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling. Ore, right? You can craft ore using relics, and you get relics from doing expeditions. You also get relics from some quests. You get relics from doing, um, you can buy relics with EX coins in the EX shop every month, every few months. You want to get as much of this as you can to make ore so that you can max out your espers. For me right now, I've gotten all the stuff that I want, I guaranteed want. And so I'm just kind of stockpiling ore until I need it for something. So like if the, randomly it'll be like, oh, I wish I could grab this skill off of this esper. I want to go grab it right now and I'm going to have the ore to do it. So I'm just kind of stockpiling right now rather than just cramming ore into all my espers. Um, but once you get them to level 60, use the ore that you need to get the skills you want. And then, you know, for me, I'm stockpiling. But that's how you get to 60 really quick. The Super Sight dungeons help you do that very quickly. You can also do expeditions to get Super Sight. Um, but stop doing that once you get to, uh, like I'll show you. Once you get to level 60, go ahead and stop doing that and focus on getting relics so you can get relics from completing expeditions. Um, there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and do a new one. See, you can get orange or white or green and black um, on Fridays. Um, so that's what you do. You could, you could run this and get super site but i like to get relics because that's what i'm trying to do this one this expedition has a potential to give me four relics so let's go ahead and do it uh come on you can add items to get 100 percent success rate that's four relics in eight hours which is it's okay not terrible relics are important this one gave me two relics thank goodness and we'll do it again we'll go ahead and do uh this one yeah Five relics in, in eight hours is a little better. Always do the good rate if you can. And that's it. That's going to help you level up your espers very quickly um, and get them to max level. So go ahead and do that. Um, and that's really about all I have for right now. Um, so thank you for the question, Dark Flare. I'm happy to kind of demonstrate it in game. Um, obviously, the bigger attack stat you get and the bigger other modifiers you get, the more damage you're going to see. And that 1.5 versus 1.15 modifier for your weapon variance is going to make a big, big difference. Um, but yeah, we can even see that on a level 1 unit that only has 332 attack. So it, it does make a difference for sure. You always want to make sure you're gearing your units the way they're going to help you do the most damage possible. Especially in events like Clash of Wills, Dark Visions, and the current Vision world to try and maximize your damage potential. So... There it is. If you've got a question you want to see in next week's video, be sure to let me know in the comments and uh, we'll try and demonstrate it for you. Um, or if you see this on Facebook, you know, leave a comment or a, a post there about it um, so that we can um, try and answer those questions. Um, but uh, yeah, cool. Uh, I, I guess one question I would have for you all is what are some of your favorite two handed weapons? Um, that are maybe usable on a budget. Um, that'll maybe be a good conversation starter. So if you've got one, uh, share it with us and maybe show us a picture of a build um, of you wearing it um, on one of your favorite units. So yeah, cool. We'll take a look at those and we will see you next week for whatever question comes up next. Take care and be good to each other, guys.